What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. So this one we're going to be talking about some questions I've seen in the comment sections in regards to null, solo operations, things like that. Kind of address some of those things while we're uh, kind of messing around with our PI here and whatnot. A lot of it comes down to people being like apprehensive about moving to null. A lot of that has to do with maybe not have lived there for a while or at all. I know for a fact, whenever I first moved to Null, I was very apprehensive and everything in, in terms of what to expect. But the truth of the matter is, it's just a different play style out here than in high sec or low sec. And a lot of people prefer Null sec because the lines are clearly drawn for the most part. I mean... In high sec, you have a bunch of people in local. They usually don't have standings for everybody. They're all essentially what we call neutral. They're not blue. They're not, you know, light blue or whatever. So you don't really know what their intentions are. The big reason why null sec is safer than low sec or high sec is because you are either going to be in a system full of blues, which are vetted by the alliance or the corporation. So you know that they're on your side. A waxing does happen. That's like friendly fire, friendly kills. It's frowned upon. People get blacklisted. So um, it's, you know, it's something you still have to worry about, but it doesn't happen as much. I think in like the past four years, I've seen or heard about, you know, maybe five or so AWOCS incidences. But a lot of those could have been prevented from better vetting <clears throat> from the, uh, the source corporation or whatever the case may be. But you really don't have to worry about too much. In most cases, you're going to be in a null stick system, you know, by yourself or with your court mates and when somebody comes into local it's going to be very apparent right if they don't have standings with the alliance or with your corporation they're going to stand out as neutral you also have an intel channel that a lot of alliances will run where people will post when they see a neutral they'll post the name the ship if they saw it and what system they're in and so that's a good source of in of uh that's a good source of information, um, especially if you're out there mining or doing whatever. You can uh, kind of see uh, see some of that stuff coming. And you can use word filters too. If you actually go to your chat settings, you can go to uh, word filters and add a bunch of systems to um, to like a little text box there. And you can. What do you normally do is I put them in like all surrounding. So you just you basically, uh, you can't see my chat right here, but if you hit the, uh, the three little dots on a chat window and then you go to, where is it? Chat settings. Yeah, uh, it's down at the very bottom. It says configure word filters and, and highlights. It looks like this. So you, words you want highlighted in chat, you can actually put in here systems, um, that surround the system you operate in. And then you can save it so that whenever a system that you're particularly curious about shows up in like Intel, it'll actually, uh, it'll actually glow up there for you. And that's a good way to, you know, kind of get you some more information as well too. But as far as like gating and stuff goes, it's like, yeah, like in high sec, you're, you're just kind of like gate around and you know kind of willy nilly, but it's a little bit different when you were in null sec. You, uh, normally I suggest people fly blockade runners or fast ships I usually don't take anything like haulers that don't have some sort of like co cloak around gating around because you know you can run into gate camps and stuff but it's nothing too crazy to worry about one of the other questions of a scene too is like how do you sell stuff as a solo player and we're gonna kind of keep this in like the the realm of like being solo <clears throat> and you know with that being said you're never really solo I mean like if you were uh, if, you know we're gonna define solo um, if you are truly solo and you, that means you never relied on anybody ever, then you would probably still be sitting at a tutorial, right? If you go buy like a mining ship off the market in Jita, like you're technically relying on somebody to build that, right? So being true solo is not really possible. What I do like about Nullsec is it's kind of like a barter. When you're Nullsec as a solo player, you, it's kind of like a barter system kind of thing. And there's always somebody who needs something. There's always somebody or some service you can provide. And usually when I'm <clears throat> mining or making fuel blocks or whatever you're doing, where you're selling, doing rat sites, you have that PVE loot. It's with a little bit of homework. It's very easy just to find somebody to, you know, buy that stuff, whether it be like a corporation that you are associated with, um, 
they will probably let you submit the uh, stuff from buybacks but also manufacturing and stuff whenever i do like fuel blocks and stuff i'm usually in contacts with people in the alliance or you know people um who are looking for stuff in, in different corporations in the alliance and i'm kind of tailoring what i'm building or what i'm doing around what the kind of market is in that situation so instead of just being on like a high second you're just kind of making whatever you're building whatever you're mining whatever and you're just you know doing whatever you do with it out here it's like you know you kind of read the room essentially you just kind of look around to figure out who needs what and what you can do and how you can sell it i've never had a pro i've never had a problem selling assets in nullsec there's usually always somebody and you don't necessarily need like you know a hauler to take it to a keep star and sell and i usually don't ever post on like player markets player markets do exist in nullsec but they're uh they're not really needed. Pretty much everything is contract based for the most part. We'll probably do a video uh, detailing more contract stuff in the future, but um, it's uh, you shouldn't really have to worry about off off putting or selling the stuff that you're you know kind of producing or mining or whatever. There's discords, communities, all that stuff exists for a reason, and that's you know a lot of that is kind of the discords and stuff will allow you to actually like um connect with buyers and stuff before you even like make a trip or something and most of the time these people who are buying in large volume will have jump rares of their own and if you're selling in their constellation they could potentially just come out to the structure and pick it up after the sale so another thing you have to worry about these sky hooks too is you know these rats will attack you so we try to be uh pretty quick off the off the grid here it takes them a while to actually get you up, but that's why I use a crane. I've always used a crane because they're really nice to pick up PI and stuff like that. But <clears throat> unlike uh, Pocos, where you might have like uh, auto Tijian Lancers or something that don't really aggro you, the Skyhook Rats will. So keep that in mind. But other than that, it's like, it was a big questions I see all the time is like, you know, how do you sell stuff? How do you operate solo? How do you move around? And whether or not you're playing an NPC Null, I probably would not play an NPC Null. NPC Null is like where people go to find PvP fights, a lot of industry. And I'm going to keep this kind of focus on industry too, because a lot of my, you know, viewers are <clears throat> into industry and mining. If you're into industry and mining, Sov Null is going to be your best bet. There's, you know, whole groups and whole corporations out there. And you can get into a corporation um and still play solo right it just kind of depends on what you know you were um brought in to that corporation what um what agreements were made before you joined up i mean i don't um i sit here and null i don't you know respond to pings i don't go out and do you know pve uh pvp roams or anything like that if i wanted to i could it's there you know my you know <clears throat> interest in the things i'm doing are very um they're not uh they're very transparent you know anybody who asks what i'm into I'm be like i i mine and i do <clears throat> industry i make fuel blocks and they know that about me and everything or i do rat sites or things like that so the option's always there to do other content like pvp or structure bashes but it's not like you, when you move out you're absolutely required to then be i mean you can get in some really bad alliances where you know the the agreement could be that you know you are into PV, pve and you want to do industry and stuff but then like you find yourself as an f1 monkey somewhere and that rarely happens you just you know just like the corporation or the alliance is going to vet you you are vetting the corporation alliance right back if they're going to be a good fit for you and everything there are a lot of good groups out in nullsec a lot of uh, groups that will are not overbearing <clears throat> who will not try to push a, a different play style that you're not interested in on, on you and things like there's plenty of people that are into pvp that can fill those ranks um there's plenty of people there's places for everybody so as a solo player you shouldn't really to be worried, worried too much about it chances are your first time in null you're going to be in a corporation with you know other people but you can still take like the solo kind of approach and everything um and if that's the case you really don't have to worry about selling or you know sourcing other buyers and stuff your corporation will probably buy everything that you uh produce and then they'll export it as well if you ever go down the path that i did and break out and have your own alliance and are operating outside of like another 
a corporation where you're dealing with essentially the alliance, then it's still just the same. It's like, you know, you are the corporation. So now you're either going to export it yourself with a, with a jump freighter, <clears throat> or you're going to find people in the alliance on discord um, and post up. They usually have market channels and stuff in there where you can be like, I have this and this, how much I want for it. And then you link them like a, a Janus audit port or whatever. And that's usually where a lot of, uh, a lot of trades, a lot of, um, contract sales, you know, kind of start and that's how they get sold and stuff. But I think the, the thing is, if you are thinking about getting in the null, um, just finding the right group and then just kind of learning as you go. Um, and obviously on this channel, you can ask questions, you know, if you are at that point where you're ready to go to null and you, you joined a good group and you're just trying to figure it out, ask questions. Discord is a great place. Our discord is a great place to answer or ask questions. And you can even send me a message on Discord too. I might not respond to you in Discord, but I will certainly make a video about it if it um, <clears throat> warrants one and cover as many of those concerns as possible. But really, it's just about jumping in with both feet and figuring it out. And once you, I'll tell you this, once you um, kind of get used to living in NullSec, then you will become a lot more self-reliant than if you were trying to do the same thing in like low sec or high sec. There's just a lot more opportunities out here. The, the risk is lower in null sec than it is in uh, low sec and high sec. And the rewards are a lot better as well too. So if you're really trying to turn your game up, <clears throat> then it might be worth uh, it might be worth thinking about and things like that. In terms of like getting ships and stuff out here, I don't really ever gate anything. That's another big question. I probably have seen a, a lot too. Um, a lot of... A lot of um, alliances or corporations that operate in NullSec have some sort of uh, logistics service, some sort of jump freighter service. And so almost every time that I've moved back out to Null, all I've done is I've bought all the things that I want to buy in Jita. And then I look at the um, the information for the alliance, like how they handle, you know, uh, pulling assets out of out of Jita. You, they usually have um, guidelines on, you know, how much cubic meter you can send out what the uh, cost per cubic meter is. And all I really do is I just buy everything I want in Jita. I set up the courier contract with the, the uh, with their uh, logistics service. And then, you know, it'll show up where it needs to show up and all that stuff. And it's really, really painless for the most part. There are situations where it might get delivered to like a Keepstar and you might be like a couple of jumps or several jumps from where that Keepstar is. At that point, you could technically talk to other people in the Alliance on Discord to have them jump it directly to your system, or there's probably people in your Alliance that have jump raiders that can do that as well. That's usually a pretty standard thing, because um, a lot of corporations will have jump freighter capable people in it too, and they will be, you know, moving stuff to that Keepstar as well. That's usually the path of um, of export, if it's, you know, makes sense um, ISC-wise. You know, a corporation will generate a lot of stuff they want to export in their system. They will jump it to like a Keepstar where they will then set up a carrier contract back to Jita um, from there. And the same the same is true in the inverse too. So, you know, they order or they get stuff from Jita sent out to that Keepstar. When it shows up, they jump out there and pick it up and bring it back, right? There's really nothing else to, you know, there's no real complicated thing about it. But... I, I do not recommend uh, gating uh, your ships out. There are times where I'll take like the crane here. I'll fill this up with like, <clears throat> you know, overseer care or overseer packages or some whatever. But, you know, when you get really good at flying a blockade runner, it's pretty easy to get out to high sec. But if I don't have to, I don't. I usually just, you know, try to, you know, have a, if I'm going to export stuff to, to high sec, I try to make that, you know, that uh, contract worth it. So if it's, you know, some like high, some high uh, volume but you know low value stuff i'll try to pad it with things like morphite which is you know low volume high value to make that uh, contract worth it but but those are my you know recommendations just you know don't try to gate you know crazy stuff you know use the uh jump freighter services for your alliance or corporation it makes it really easy to get assets out as far as selling stuff that you're mining or you're getting from pbe Either your corporation will buy them or there will be somebody in the alliance that will buy them. There's always somebody buying um, things. It's, you know, very, I'll pretty much every null block I've ever been associated with has been had a very healthy economy. So that shouldn't be worried. You shouldn't worry about that too much um, either. 
And in terms of just like surviving every day, it's kind of the same rules apply, you know, as far as industrialist miners go. If you see a neutral in system, then, you know, you warp to a rear tether or to your POS. And a rear tether, I'll give you a, a little look here. <clears throat> I don't have one set up right now. And it takes a little while for this Fortis R to show up. I think it's because of the skin. But uh, a rear tether is essentially like a, a bookmark that's made that's, you know, not in a, uh, a common place. So normally, if you were going to warp to this Fortis R, whatever direction you're coming in at, you're going to be kind of on the, uh, the main central plane somewhere out here, right? So what you would do is you'd look at your system, <clears throat> figure out where... Uh, you know, gates are and things like that. So let's say if somebody came into a gate and they always go to the portas are and they show up over here, what you can do is you can set up a bookmark on the other side. So basically on this opposite side, really close to the actual building itself. So you can actually, when you warp to that, you won't come into the docking ring like everybody else. You actually go further in. The same thing is true with like Jita. There, I have a dumb a Jita dead side, uh, which is essentially just a rear tether. But like pretend this is Jita and like this is where all the craziness happens outside of Jita. If you over here on the back side of Jita, it's basically the ghost town. So what I did it was I would just have a bookmark set up right here. So if I'm coming in from the Celeski gate or something and everybody's expecting me to drop here like everybody else does, instead I'm dropping way over here, which is like 60 to 100 kilometers away. So it protects me a little bit and allows me to dock or get tethered up or whatever so that's just like the rear tether thing in most cases if you're in a mining fleet and stuff out in like ice or something if a neutral comes in then i usually if there's a pause and i do recommend using a player owned uh star base i always take the mining fleet especially if you're using burst or boost to the pause and then chill out and then once things clear up a little bit then take them to the rear tether and dock them up one because your command ship, whether it be your Orca, your Porpoise, or your Oracle, will have a weapons timer and it won't be able to dock if you went straight to like a Tatara or a Fortazar or something like that. So we go to the POS first, we chill out, we let the weapons timer um, expire, we kind of get more information and whatever, if it's uh, somebody passing through or if it's actually like a tackle or a scout or something, you know, and then we kind of go from there. But all that still becomes second nature after you've lived in, in Null. After you've lived in Null for like about a week or so and you kind of learn the ropes of, you know, using Intel and, you know, using rear tethers and pauses, then it's it's very, very safe. Um, it's just you're not going to do stupid stuff, right? Um, and you'll be able, if you're, when you get to the point you feel comfortable, you'll be able to do the things like drag mining with oracles and things like that that you would never probably want to do in like low sec or something. But without this video running too long, obviously if you have any more questions in terms of like survival or how do you kind of operate and stuff in Nullsec as solo, I'll do my best to uh, answer those questions and everything. But thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Peace out.